Good morning to you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be out with you this morning. Of course, looking at the title of our, of our order here of, of worship service and, you know, sunrise service, S-U-N. But I also thought, you know, we called the rising of the sun, S-O-N, this morning. So well, what an amen to that. And, and so we've had quite an opportunity as a church uh, these past few days. Bill was sent out through this app. And it was the actual time of the events that transpired, you know, through Jesus' walk there to the cross. Uh, and even today, you know, yesterday being silent and different things. But it was impactful for me. And uh, I tell you, it was uh, going through your day of events and you have to pause and look. And like at 3 o'clock today, he dies, you know, and getting that message. And it's just really talking about, um, you know, how, how real it is, but also the love that you have. You know, for, that he has for us. And what an opportunity we have to gather this morning and be in worship together. Uh, it is good to be with you this morning. If you're listening with us from uh, for St. Clair Baptist Church, we're glad you're part of us either here uh, on social media there. So, uh, what a great opportunity. I'm thankful for Jim and uh, getting us uh, this uh, sermon together here for us this morning and being able to get together. Uh, do we have anybody else to read scripture for us this morning? Heavenly Father, Lord, what a, what, a, what a special day, Lord. I know that you make all days special, but today, just thinking about uh, the culmination of the love that you have for each and every one of us and what became available to all of us through the cross, Father, that bridge, through that gap uh, between you and us, made possible by your Son, Jesus Christ, through the cross. I'm just thankful for that this morning, Father. May we be humbled evermore um, through that sacrificial love that you give us. We pray, Father, as we go out and take this message and realization of what you did for us through your love, that we will reflect that to others. Father, that you give us a boldness in our step and a faithfulness to walk for you in the path that you have for us. 
pray for opportunities to lead others to Christ. We pray that today would be the day for those, Father, that have been searching for answers and to fill that God-sized void in their heart, that they would turn to you, Father, and accept that salvation through your atonement that your Son, Jesus Christ, may pray. Father, we're thankful for each and every one that was able to come out today. We pray for those that couldn't make it out. Father, we pray for all those standing in the gap this morning to deliver your word and your message. We pray for our churches. We pray for our nation, country, our missionaries, Father. Father, we're thankful for Jim. We just ask a special blessing on him as he brings a message to us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we have any special issues? Sorry. Get ahead of me quick. <laughs>
it is good to see you this morning. And uh, I was telling Mike uh, a few minutes ago, uh, coming in, we had uh, we had the effective um, sound behind us of the roosters crowing. If you wanted that for the for uh, the sunrise and service and all, and of course the sun is just getting up. It's such a pretty time, but it is a special time when we come together and uh, celebrate. The resurrection. What a blessing time. As I was working on the message and looking at it, I was thinking of the real first sunrise service that I was part of. Uh, many years ago, we, uh, our little church out in the country, uh, we were on a hill. Now, that's rare where I lived. Uh, all our land is flat. There are not many hills, but it just happened that our church was on the highest point in South Mississippi, and you could see a long way. So it was, uh, the sunrise service was an idea of uh, college young people. Now, that's, that's unusual. Uh, we, we have some of our uh, Marians that gets up right and early every morning, don't you, Mary? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, we, we decided that we wanted to have our very own. And we, uh, as the, we talked to them, our preacher and the others there said, well, when you have it, I don't think there'll be many here. We gathered that morning. That's a beautiful morning. We were putting out chairs. We had it outside. Um, Mississippi's a bit warmer than it is in uh, Tennessee this time of the year. And we started bringing out chairs and we brought more chairs. We wound up with more in the sunrise service than we had in the worship service that day. Close to 100 people for sunrise. Nobody could believe it. They would come. Love remembering. Because this time of morning is such a special time as we come and we celebrate. That first sunrise service, it was a sunny morning. A morning like none that anyone had ever seen before. One that they would never forget. The Friday before had been a terrible day. They had watched the man that they believed in, they put their faith in, that they thought was the Messiah. They watched him be tried. They watched him be crucified. They watched all until uh, they carried him to trial and, and they fled. And all of a sudden, all their dreams, all their hopes, everything about them gone. But something was about to happen in a grave site that would change it all. If you uh, get a chance to be in Jerusalem at some time, the Mount of Olives where uh, Jesus was praying uh, before he was arrested, he could see the place that he would be crucified, the place he would be tried. He could see all of it. It was all within in the distances around him. He knew what was about to happen. And he could see where it was going to all take place. Mark 16, 1 through 7, gives us that initial story. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. 
He's risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he dwelt before you in the Galilee, and there you shall see him as he has said unto you. What I want us to do this morning as we think of that sunrise service, I want us to look at it from a different perspective. I want you to think the way that uh, I've entitled the message, Standing at the Door. I want you to think about what Jesus' thoughts were that morning. What was taking place? What was happening? It's all related through the scripture in different ways. But we're going to put ourselves at times into his place and to think what his thoughts were as he was coming back to life, as he had completed what God had intended for him to do. There, near the grave site that morning, action had begun a little before sunrise. An angel had descended and had rolled away the stone. And all there, but although there were Roman soldiers that were there guarding the tomb, uh, they seemingly fell, fell on the ground around them. They were, they were so afraid, they were scared to death. Can you imagine what it would have been like to have been there, to have been on guard, and have been concerned about this grave site and been told that if something happened, if uh, the, the body was gone, what they were going to do to them? And all of a sudden, an angel appeared. I think I would have been scared to death to see an angel appear. Uh, Friday night, Kurt and Lisa had uh, provided for us the opportunity to see uh, the drama Jesus, and in it, it's quite, it's quite a uh, shocking thing to see the way they portrayed the angel coming, just the light and all that was around him, and that's what they saw that morning. In a few moments, there was activity around the gravesite. The stones rolled away. And the man who had died on Friday afternoon, all of a sudden, he began to move. He was there on the slab, but he sat up. He sat up. He came through the grave clothes. He stood, and he walked towards that open door. The angels didn't have to open it for him to get out they open it for others to see him. But most likely when it was open, I can imagine him walking to that and looking out. Looking, and wonder what his thoughts were. What a different day it was. Probably the birds said, said some said the birds probably sang in a different way. Jerusalem in the springtime is beautiful. They have the trees blooming and all the things around them. He looked into that. He walked in the door, about to step into the world. He was alive now. There's no more. But you know what? There was something else about that step. We who are believers, he took us with. He carried us into the world to live for him throughout eternity. That's what it was all about. Looking as he stepped into the garden, he began to think. He began to go over what had taken place. I can imagine he talked often the heavenly father. We know that he prayed. We know the trauma that he went through ahead of time. But I can imagine he said, Father, it went as we prayed. You knew from creation what would take place. You knew how it would happen. You knew all the things that were there. And I can imagine that it 
hit him again, as he said. You know, I felt the pain of the sins of all mankind. Father, it was agony. I don't know how they live with that sin. I don't know how the people can stand that. Father, what a blessing it is that we can take it away. What a blessing it is that we can give them forgiveness. And Father, now, we who are eternal, I took upon that physical body. I went through death. But Father, now we know that though they go through death, that they won't stay there. They will be a little bit here for eternity. Father, we won the victory. It's over. And in that victory, we've given them the opportunity to live with us throughout eternity. What a victory it was. As we look at that and look at thoughts that he might have had, we also know that he was thinking of the promises that had been made, of what was going on about us and about all people. I think that probably it came back to his thoughts. Father, when we created them, we created them for good. <coughs> they were meant for good. We put them in the perfect place in the garden. But sin and Satan intervened. He took his took their place. Last night, Marvin and I were watching a presentation of the Bible, and uh, in it, the thing that caught my attention most was when Jesus was tempted in the desert area. The picture of Satan. They portrayed him well. The evil, the hatred, all that was there. And he meant it for us. Satan intended for us to be taken. But Father, they didn't know your plan. That it included a cross, a grave, that tomb, and a resurrection. Father, you had it all worked out. In fact, into the details of what took place over in Luke 23 and Matthew 27 and uh, the promises of Isaiah in 9. It talks about what would happen once that Jesus was in tune. And it says in, in the scripture uh, there from uh, Luke, a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, a good man, went and asked for Jesus' body. As the scripture had said, he was buried in the barred tomb of wealth. God had it all worked out. Every detail of what was to take place. Father, you did it for uh, them. You've taken care of them. Isaiah 53, 5 talks about the stripes, what all he bore, all of those things. Father, it's complete now, the message is saying. And I wonder if he thought, how many will listen to that, Lord? And probably going back through his mind again was what he had experienced, what had taken place. I can think that he might have thought about the day that he spent with Nicodemus, so the night he spent as Nicodemus came to him, thinking, I remember Nicodemus. He was, he was a, like Paul, he was a Pharisee. He's a Pharisee. He knew all the things. But I remember when I told him that he had to be born again, he was so shocked and said, how is that possible? I can't do that. You know, it's impossible for an old man. They portray him uh, probably uh, in his 60s or so. An old man to be born again, that's impossible. Look, look at Nicodemus. Though he comes to an understanding, it was hard for him. Lord, you really know how the Jewish leadership did. They wouldn't believe in you. They were the ones that condemned him. They were the ones that had him crucified. 
How many will listen, Lord, now? How many in the future will open their hearts, their ears, their minds, and listen to the message they would give them? They were meant for good. But Satan has messed up the world that we have. As he looked out from the tomb, I think he thought, had other thoughts too. I think the second thing that he was thinking about was soon it will be time to see my disciples. And he had to go through his mind. Father, remember how they ran. Remember how they, as soon as I was arrested, they all fled, except for John. They all ran. Father, can they ever become what we intend for them to be? Can they ever take that stand? Can they possibly carry out their plan? Luke 24, 6 through 8. He comes to the story that uh, the angel reminded them that when the angel was talking to the women, I'll meet you. Remember what I told you? I, you know, I'll meet you in Calvary. Don't be concerned. But he knew something else. Jesus knew. They were back in the upper room. And there was still tremendous unbelief. They could not accept what had taken place. Though the women had reported what they had seen, what the angels had told them, though Mary Magdalene told them that she had seen him, she had talked with him, they still couldn't believe. If you remember, and we'll use this in, in the next service, on the road to Emmaus, they were talking about, some of them had told that he had been resurrected, but they had not seen him. They couldn't conceive of that happening. I think it was going through to Jesus' mind. Did they never listen to all the times I told them exactly what was going to take place? That I had to die, it would be three days, I would be raised again. The temple was torn down. It would be put back together. I told them over and over. But then he remembered when the Holy Spirit's with them, they'll understand. They'll understand it all. When that takes place, Peter will learn to preach. After all of his fear, after all the things there, the world will hear. The entire world will get a chance to hear that message. It's time for them to deal with those disciples. And as he dealt with them, as he brought them to the point of understanding, he dealt with us. He helped us understand what this was all about. That what had to be in order for the forgiveness of our sins, that's what the resurrection was all about. And then, maybe, his mind shifted again because we're told in the scripture. Next, he was going to deal with Mary. And it's time for her to come. Time for her to be there. He knew that she had become kind of the leader of the women of that time. Uh, that was around there. She was the one who encouraged them. She was the one that brought them home. But he knew something else. Once that she hears and hears what's going on and sees, She's still going to be afraid. She's going to be afraid of what's happened. Because as she comes to the tomb, she sees it roll back. She looks in. She talks to the angels. They told her, uh, you know, that he had arisen. Why was she upset? But did she go back? No, the scripture tells us she was still wandering in the garden when she ran into Jesus. When she met. And he asked her, Mary, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? And you remember she was telling they've taken my Lord's body away and I know not where they put him. Can you tell me? And he says, Mary, he calls her name. 
she recognizes his voice. And I think that in that time, in that time that they were together, she remembered something. She remembered forgiveness gives grace. It's not a temporary thing. When he had forgiven her, it reached out to her. It was for eternity. And she said, Teacher, I know you're alive. I know you're there. I know that it's you. That was one of the great confessions of faith that we have in the Bible. Lord, I know who you are. I know you are alive. It was one that will be made over and over again as lost people recognize who Jesus is. As they recognize that he can take away their sin, can give them forgiveness, can remold their lives and make them different. That all of that is a part of it. It had given change to her life. If you'd have lived in the first century, you'd have greeted each other, each other as you met with these words. He arose. He arose. They had built their life and their future around those words. He arose. I remember in, when we were in Russia, it was right after Easter. And remember across Red Square, the big man, Jesus Christ, truly, is alive. The message of Easter, that's what it was all about. And they remember it, they knew it. We've celebrated across the years that back. Ralph Lowry, who was one of the great songwriters of his day, late 1800s, was thinking of the Easter season, and he was thinking there should be a special hymn written for Easter, to remember that. And so he wrote, Lo in the grace you lay, Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose in victory, it goes on to say. And what a message that is for us today. What a message it is that we can come and celebrate a living Lord. Maybe we need to celebrate it. As Mary did that day. As she went back, praising God for what had taken place. And to tell everybody she saw that he was alive again. Is that what our day is? Are we going to be sure that we greet others and tell them he arose, what he's done for us, that he is alive? The day as Jesus was there coming forth from the tomb, he knew it was something special. He knew it was a day of second chances. He thought about that. His coming forth was our second chance. We had been born into the world. And we fell under the faith of all the others. We became sinners. But we had a second chance. Do we stop and think often about what he gave us that day as he came forth? He took away our sins. He took away our sins. No matter what we've done, what's happened, anything else, he's taken it away. In fact, he reminds us, he washes us as white as snow. He remakes our life 
into what we should be, what we were intended to be. He prepares us for heaven. He gets us ready. He was fixing to go back, but he wanted us to be there also. As I thought of that, what came across my mind was this. We are the miracles of the day. He walked out of the tomb. You ever thought about that? You have the miracle that he took a life that was lost because of sin and made it anew. He made you anew and made that part of it. Without the resurrection, Jesus would have only been remembered as another good man. It was the resurrection that proved he was the Son of God. He was that one. It's because of the resurrection we have the promise of eternity with him. What a moment it was because it determines the future for all times and all day. This morning I want to close with uh, some thoughts. This is uh, part of the sermon that Peter Marshall preached. It was an Easter sermon. He had told in the other part what had taken place uh, on Friday with the crucifixion, uh, the burial, uh, the time of the, uh, the disciples being in hiding in the silent day of Saturday. And then he says, then came Sunday morning. The first rays of the early morning sun cast a great light that caused the dewdrops on the flowers to sparkle like diamonds. The atmosphere of the garden was changed. It was the same garden, yet strangely different now. The heaviness of despair was gone. There was a new note in the singing of the birds. Suddenly, a certain hour, in a certain hour between sunset and dawn, in that new kingdom, which had belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, there was a strange stirring, a fluttering of unseen forces, a whirring of angel wings. The rustle as the breath of God moved through the garden. Strong, immeasurable forces poured life back into the dead body that had laid upon the cold stone slab. And the dead man rose up. He came out of the grave clothes. Mm -hmm. He walked to the threshold of the tomb. He stood swaying for a moment on wounded feet. And then walked into the middle of the night garden. Mm -hmm. Alive forevermore. <coughs> that was the resurrection. And as he arose, that was the promise to us. We can live with him throughout eternity through faith, through acceptance of him, through forgiveness of sin, and through the touch of the Holy Spirit that lives within our life. Aren't you thankful he got us that moment? Can you imagine what life would have been like if he had not? What would have happened to us? What a sad time it would have been because all of us would have been lost for eternity. Let's make sure that we praise today, give him thanks, and live out for him our life that shows Jesus alone. He truly is alive today. Let's pray together. Father, how thankful we are that you loved us so much you were willing to give your son for sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sin for the forgiveness of us to remake us to prepare us for the heaven you've prepared Father how thankful we are that you reached out to us that you touched the lives of those early disciples 
And they came forth with a message so that we could hear. Father, help us never to be buried in our job of telling others that the message will continue and that those that are lost can find salvation through faith in you because we tell them, because we share it. Father, I pray that you bless us today as we come together. Bless us as your family, your family of believers. We pray for the blessing of those around the world this morning that are celebrating your resurrection. Father, just help us that in all we do, that we'll live it out every day, that every morning we'll remember he arose. He arose for us. And Father, we live that out. Father, we just thank you for such love because it was truly undeserved. But you loved us in spite of who we were. And you gave us that opportunity. Bless us now as we go this morning. Just be with us and keep us close to you in all that we do. For we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.